my loves, welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel, your home base, your safe space. It feels so good to have you here now with me, shuffling, pulling cards and the charts for this amazing, spectacular lunar eclipse that's happening in the sign of Taurus. Now, if you hear any noise in the background, my puppy is here. I have two puppies. I have Franklin, I have Nova, and I have eight chickens. And we are all hanging out inside today in my home, so it can be a little squeaky and noisy or whatever, but it is what it is. For the most of for most of you guys, you guys enjoy the noise that is they, they make and the personality that is that they bring. Um, I do want to say that with this video, I'm going to be taking my time. I'm absolutely going to be taking my time. I don't want to rush my process. I don't want to rush the chart. I don't want to rush this reading. I really want to take my time with spirit, with you, with our guides and really download all of the information that it is that we can gain from them to guide us through this lunar eclipse because I can already feel sense. I've seen and heard that this is going to be quite a doozy for uh, a few of us, the majority of us, okay? Having said that, I'm going to be working with the Tazama African Tarot. They sent this to me. It's a beautiful tarot deck. I haven't worked with it yet. I, I actually just opened it right before I started filming. It came in this beautiful case. Um, shout out to you guys for sending me this. It's a beautiful deck already, but I'm really excited to, um, you know, see what, how spirit will work with me with this deck. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and dive right in. First things first, like I said, November 19th is going to be the time of this lunar eclipse, right? For those of you guys that don't know, lunar eclipses are powerful times in history, powerful moments that we will experience radical, massive, karmic, faded shifts that can change and will change the course of our lives forever. We only have one life to live, as you guys know, and it's these faded moments that, have, that can really make or break situations, relationships, whatever it is that spirit, the universe, the planets feels is weak or needs to be adjusted in some way. They do not want you to carry on and to build or contribute more energy into something that doesn't, that isn't a vibrational match for you, that you are no longer in alignment. As human beings, you guys know we are always, always evolving. As far as we come, we still have to evolve moving forward from that. And with that, we have to embrace being flexible, embrace being fluid with where spirit is guiding us. And it does require a certain level of trust and faith in ourselves, in our higher selves, and also the divine in what it sees and feels and senses that sometimes our conscious brains, our logical brains don't understand. The eclipses are moments that trigger the change that has been building up or that creates like a catalyst, like a, 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 break, a, a breakdown or breakthrough that you might not have seen or sensed, but it still needs to happen regardless, okay? And that's what it is that we're having, having on November 19th in the sign of Taurus. For those of you guys that don't know, Taurus has been under the gun. The energy of Taurus has been under the gun for, for over a year, definitely over a year, over two years. Why? Because Uranus has been moving through the sign of Taurus. Taurus rules the things that we value, our idea of security, our idea of comfort and predictability. Regardless of what your sun, your moon, your rising sign is, we have Taurus somewhere ruling a house within our chart. So the energy is there within that place. And Uranus, the planet of disruption and erratic change, has been swinging the, a massive sledgehammer and just doing this total revitalization project. I don't know if, that, if I'm saying that correctly, but just totally revamping that area of your house, meaning that area of your life. And this could be drastic, this could be radical. It can be uncomfortable, especially with Uranus. If you're a person who likes predictability or wants 
you know, you have your own goals set in, in mind, Uranus, Uranus doesn't really take into consideration or factor in all of your hopes and your wishes. It thinks about where you are headed in the future, not where it is that you're at right now. And sometimes our brains as human beings, as spiritually aligned as we are, will get set in our ways with our goals and have a difficult time understanding why spirit or why the universe or why our circumstances are shifting so radically, so drastically in the current moment because we can't see where it is that we are ultimately going to be guided to go. So with Uranus, again, thinking about light years ahead, thinking about the future, not only your future, but the future of the globe, the future of humanity, you know, it can be, it can be really tough. One of the w ways that this energy will show up, and I want you guys to really keep an eye out for this at the time of the eclipse, is in the stock exchange, in um, our how our finances are being spent and, and um, how they swing up and down, your taxes. Um, the other thing that is I want you guys to pay attention to is real estate, changes within the real estate, changes within your home, things that you would love to see yourself invest in, things that you would love to see build up in value. It will swing greatly from having a lot of value to very minimum value. Cryptocurrency is something that will be changing a lot. Prepare for massive breakthroughs when it comes to cryptocurrency and the stock exchange as, as a whole. Um, again, with Uranus, you guys, it's so unpredictable where this energy can kind of show up. We just know that something is building. We know that something is brewing under the surface. And as astrologers and intuitives, we do our best to um, stay open and flexible with wherever, you know, the planets, the universe is going to take us. At least I do. So I, as an Earth sign, um, I traditionally <laughs> like to have some level of predictable routine but I have a lot of tremendous respect for Uranus. I have a lot of tremendous respect for Uranus moving to the sign of Taurus. And I have a lot of tremendous respect when it comes to trusting the divine and my higher self and my guides and where they want me to go. Because I understand and I can sense that I'm in good hands. And so are you. So are you. So real estate, stock market, our investments are going to swing these are things, you guys, you do not want to panic. These are things that we can't control. These are things that regardless of how well your portfolio or how well your bank statements are looking, you know, your savings, something can just really come up out of left field. So just go ahead and prepare for that. This is not a time to spend buku money on anything that is... Um, not important right now. It's going to be really tempting. Don't get me wrong. With Taurus, this energy is very, very tempted to buy luxurious things. I'm seeing an increase in beauty treatments, Botox, body body uh, change changes, um, especially when it comes to surgery, when it comes to procedures. This is with partly, largely, um, because Mars moving through the sign of Scorpio right now really wants to make massive changes in the realms of aesthetic and beauty transformation that is, it's, you can't really go back on it. So my concern is that if you are feeling called to make a massive change, like a radical change to your body, I would just wait until Mars is moving under, moving away from the pressure of uh, uh, directly opposing Uranus, it's just not good, especially under a full moon. It's not good for your body. It's not good for um, longevity, for your health, for your vitality. Just mark my words, especially when it comes to surgeries and procedures like that, anything going under the knife. If it's aesthetic, definitely not when it, when it comes to aesthetic. It's very tempting. I can see it within the chart. I do not, I do not recommend. I would wait at least a month and a half, two months, two months. That's just me um, looking at the charts and I just wanna keep that 100% honest and open with you guys. When it comes to investments, be mindful that at the time of the eclipse, there's going to be an opportunity for you to uh, put a lot of money 
into something or gain a lot of money from it. Use your discernment with that, my loves, absolutely. This is has a lot to do with Venus sitting in the sign of Capricorn. She's going to be trining off with Uranus, again, sitting in the sign of Taurus, where we're having this uh, full moon eclipse. There's, there's, without a doubt, there's going to be some type of shakeup. Hopefully, fingers crossed for the good um, when it comes to your finances. If it looks like an opportunity, especially if you see an opportunity coming through from something breaking down, that is supported within the chart. However, if you have to put in a large sum of money that makes you uncomfortable, I do not see this. If you, especially if you're someone who wants pre um, predictable, you are going, whatever investments you make under the light of this eclipse, they are going to swing greatly up and down. If you are not prepared for that, and that can create a loss for you that is too great, then the gamble of what the reward can be, this is not the time to do that investment. Trust me, it's going to be very tempting, but I want to always be transparent with you guys. If you can take the financial risk, look at this, two of pentacles here and page of wands. If you can take the risk and when it swings up and down, it's not gonna make you panic. In fact, you might be entertained by it. These types of opportunities can really absolutely 89% swing in your favor, but I do not look at just your financial um, well-being. I look at your emotional well-being. I look at your spiritual well-being. I look at your peace of mind. All of those things are factored in when I'm pulling a chart for myself, for my friends, for my clients, and for the world. So, of course, you guys use your own discernment, okay? Use your own discernment and with what it is that I'm saying um, to you right now, okay? And if you have to recap and re-listen what, to what it is that I just said, please do that. Um, the other thing that's really standing out to me, my loves, is Saturn squaring off with Uranus retrograde. I mean, this creates just crazy amount of pressure when it comes to politics, business, um, policy, uh, any, any type of organized, established situations within society, within the world, within your life. This can absolutely, in your own intimate life, break down and really put you in a position of uncomfortability. In fact, the vision that it is I just had was that of five of pentacles. It feels like you're being left out in the cold. This has a lot to do with the, the idea of divorce, separation, um, and the splitting up of resources or things that make you feel powerful or things that make you feel supported. Um, Spirit is saying, you know, right to me right now to tell you that you know, honestly, uh, having a sense of control and having a sense of safety is, is ultimately just an illusion. Um, but at the same time, they're validating our need for it regardless. So I just want to say that if you are going through divorce, separation, um, or uh, you're something that, that you have you wanted to invest into the long haul, it feels like there's a drought and a feeling of safety, security. You might be questioning your own path. You might be questioning a big question mark. Where is this taking me? Where am I headed? This has a lot to do with your energy being drained from you, from the way that you've been uh, showing up for the world, for the way that you've been showing up to this relationship, the way that you've been showing up to your career, for your family. These are all things that are now under feeling that the, the pressure of Saturn and Uranus squaring off. Sometimes it feels very hopeless. The energy that it is that I'm feeling is it feels very dry and cold. Um, this means that something, again, that once was very profitable, that once felt very promising, now it feels very empty. Can I fix this? Can I build it up? Can I make it better? Um, I want to stop with that right now. Spirit is saying this is a great time to pause. Yes. <clears throat> the Hermit card is the first card to show up. With this, my loves, and every single one of us are different. We're all at different points and stages within our lives. I've actually been feeling this for myself as well. I mean, we're all under the same umbrella of energy. With the Hermit card showing up, it says the area of your life that feels very cold and dry, and it might be multiple areas of your life. It might not just be one. Um, you really are being called right now to reassess and to reform it are the words that are coming through. We have the Hermit card here. This is about internally seeking 
um, answers to questions that aren't easily found, you know, and these are things that you have to define them for yourself. You have to feel it out for yourself. And this is not an overnight success story. It's something that is a part of your journey, a part of your legacy that has to, you have to have these ups and these downs. It is going to swing. That's, that's spirit is saying that you're actually on the right path. If you feel like, if you feel like, you know, nothing that you can do, and it, it, there's also this level of performance. I just heard spirit saying performance. We don't want you to perform anymore. We don't want you to show up in the same way, doing the same thing. We want there to be some level of um, reevaluation so that you're staying authentic and true to your path. And your path is not meant to look perfect and smooth all the time. There's going to be disruptions. There's going to be moments where you are going to have to, uh, what's the word, be innovative. You're going to have to learn how to find your creativity again. You're going to have to learn how to refine and rekindle your spark, your passion. Spirit is saying that it's not gone from you forever. It's just, what is it? What is it? What is it? I don't want to put words in their mouth. It's transforming. It's evolving. Don't forget. Yeah. Wow. I love this. Don't forget, my loves. Pluto is still moving to the sign of Capricorn. Pluto rules transformation, power, and manipulation. This also has been working with our shadow selves. For some of you guys, some of the aspects of your, of your relationship have been rooted in the reality of the shadow self. And as you are working to evolve that, to fix that, to heal that, you yourself have evolved. And that's why, Four of Cups, there's a lot of aspects of you that no longer are encouraged by the way that it was because you've outgrown it. So this is where you can feel this level of incomplete, um, this level of this feels empty within my life. This does not feel good anymore. What used to make me happy here, now I need more from this. I need more sustenance. I need more nourishment. Probably because when you entered into this situation, the circumstance from the jump, it really, when it came to your shadow self, it quenched a, a part of you that needed to learn that was undergoing massive transformation. Um, I'm getting a vision right now, you guys, and I'm really starting to zone out. So um, the ibis, I want you guys to, to look into the message of the ibis. It's the Egyptian white bird. Um, there's a lot of uh, anxiety. There's parts of you that were very, very um, anxious when you built this relationship, um, when you built this career, when you built this path, when you stepped on foot on this journey. There was a big part of you that was anxious and it was similar to excitement, but it actually came from anxiety. That part of you has really, Spirit is saying it's been cooled, um, like calmed down. So now that it, you've resolved that issue and now that you've evolved and you're wanting something different, something more, Spirit is saying you're, you're trying to find substantial. Yeah, Five of Cups. There's a part of you that is also mourning, mourning. It's like disappointment. It's like I've gone so far in my life. I only, and there's this emphasis on time, like you only have one life to live. And spirit says you're right on time. You're you're genuinely right. You're right on time. It does. You may not feel like it, but it's because you have this higher expectation of your own, of your own experiences. The very root of this reading, my loves, is the Eight of Swords. And it's funny that I even said anxiety because I feel like this is. It's like you're the anxiety kind of is repeating itself. Um. The anxiety is repeating itself because it started off as fueling your excitement, fueling your passion, and infinity sign, my loves, infinity sign. So as you transformed and evolved, now that anxiety, that excitement has morphed into, I'm, I, I've gone through all of this, I've, I've gone through all this transformation, I've learned these lessons, I've defeated the odds, and I've, and I've come this far only to feel like this? Five of Cups, Four of Cups, Eight of Swords, are you kidding me? And there's this massive revelation that spirit wants to give you right now that says you're actually on the right 
track. You're on the right track. I also heard um, we're trying to keep up with you. It feels like there's multiple people, multiple things that uh, are being, the word is reform. The word reform keeps coming through. They're being reformed, they're re being revamped. Yeah, hanged man. They feel very stuck. Um, not, not intentionally, not on purpose. They just, just like you, they're trying to find the way out. They're trying to find the solution. They're trying to find, I heard um, purpose. Pur pur purpose and prophecy. They're trying to be divinely inspired. Wow, the lover's card just came through. And the reason why this card is coming through and I can really strongly sense this and feel this is because they there is a divinely ordained, so and what's beautiful too is that this uh, lunar eclipse, this partial lunar eclipse is falling in the sign of Taurus. Taurus is ruled by Venus. The lovers, however, is ruled by Gemini, but Venus rules our attraction, what we're attracted to, what we are magnetizing towards us. Um, our, our desire for beauty and love and softness and goodness in our lives. Not only in our heart, but tangible things, because Taurus also rules the earth. It rules physical manifestation, the material, things that we can see, feel, sense, hear, touch, taste. So having said that, there is this harmonizing alignment that needs to, that has already started happening within others. And I truly feel like it comes from discontentment with how things are. And with that, I feel Spirit is talking about the Taurus um, full moon is going to highlight and secure where you are headed and who you're headed with and where it is that you're going, especially when it comes to finances, abundance, security, love, investments for the future and beyond. Let's continue to carry on with the reading, shall we? My angels, my guides, our angels, our guides, what do you need us to know, hear, see, receive? for the lunar eclipse. I'm getting a vision of an alligator. There's secrets. Secrets, there's secret, untold secrets, things that you don't know about. Things that are under the surface, things that are under the radar that you don't need to know about in order for them to show up. I'm also hearing the word perform. Performance, perform. It's this, I feel, it, and this is honestly, this feels like the cycle that's been ending, especially now that I'm thinking about it as the sun is exiting out of the sign of Scorpio. Scorpio season is very, very intense. Why? Because it needs you to fall deeper into alignment with your authentic truth, with your authentic self in order for you to understand who you are, what you are, what you're made of, what you're made of, where you're going. It needs you to understand the power that you hold within yourself, that it is undeniable, that it cannot be taken away from you. If you are doing anything that is inauthentic and not in alignment, it will truly zap you of your power. It will suck the power of the life out of you. But it is you who gets to decide if you are speaking life or death into your situations, into your, into your relationships, into yourself, into your career. And when you are speaking, do you believe it? Is it the truth? Do you know that it's the truth? Or is it all a performance? Because your, your higher self, your physical body, your mental body, your spiritual body can sense the truth and realizes when you're lying to yourself or when someone is lying to you or when the circumstances is not it. Scorpio season is telling you <clears throat> we want to be aligned, we want to be in alignment. We do not want to be performative. We want it to be authentic. We want it to, to honor your path. And that sometimes means that there are certain things that have to be expelled, that have to be repelled from your life so that you can move forward, so that you can carry on in a position of power and truth and authenticity that is in alignment. And then as I'm saying that, you guys, we have the sun card here. The sun card absolutely represents optim optimism, play, happiness, joy, fruitfulness, vitality. But the sun card showing up is saying just look where the sun's placement is within the chart. And the sun again falls within the sign of Scorpio, directly opposing 
the moon that's happening in the sign of Taurus. Spirit is saying, do not be stubborn. Do not be set in your ways. Be open to this transformation. Do not be afraid of it. Do not be afraid of where we're headed. Do not be afraid of the messages, the truth. Do not be afraid of your feelings. Some of you guys look at your feelings and you say, the fact that I feel disappointment, the fact that I feel incomplete, the fact that I feel a void, that scares me. And spirit says, the fact that you feel that shows you that you are about to birth something so much more than what you are currently sitting in right now. That is the truth. That is the truth. And that requires a level of evolution, of evolution, evolution, um, evolution, and your ability to transform with the circumstance. Okay. And that requires that you have to be flexible, let go and trust and have faith. Some of you guys are saying again, yes, again, if you're living, breathing, you are going to evolve and continue to change and shift. That is a blessing. That's not a curse. The magician card. This is telling you again, you are powerful. Your words are powerful. Your energy is powerful. Your magic is powerful. Are you speaking life or death over your situation? Are you speaking ill? Are you allowing others to speak ill over you? You need to be speaking blessings. Isn't that right, babe? Good morning. Oh, thank you for the kisses. This is my Nova girl. Oh, gosh, she's so clumsy. She has a, she's only three months. She has no idea how her own strength, speaking of power, she has no idea her strength sometimes. She just stumbles over her own feet. Meanwhile, my other Leo ba baby, Franklin, is five five pounds and he knows his power and bosses her around that in itself is a metaphor you guys and leo energy i have two leo babies that's why i'm saying this leo energy knows and owns its power because it comes from the heart it doesn't say oh i need to be you know six feet tall or i need to be a giant or i need to be the strongest person in the room it says i know who i am and for that reason i will speak you know, I'll speak my truth and people listen. <laughs> it's like the strength card. Speaking of strength, you guys, we have nine of swords and ace of cups. Don't allow your feelings to, to freak you out. Your feelings are very, very powerful. Some of you guys need to revisit again, writing your truth, especially with magician card here. This is about writing words, speaking, um, abracadabra type of energy. The magician is ruled by Mercury writing these things down, getting it out, and working on, again, manifesting or scripting your reality. Allow yourself to question, where are we going? Where are we headed? What do I want? Some of you guys need to black out, block out the noise of what others are telling you in the media on Instagram, on YouTube. The lover's card jumps out again, and the death card. You guys are really needing to block out the noise of what others are telling you because it, you, you're getting uncomfortable be, because you want to believe it. And Spirit says the only fact is your intuitive fact, the facts that I've given you, the messages that I'm giving you. Write it down. Go back to your journal. I teach this all the time in Sacred Circle Tarot School that, you know, no matter, regardless of what the world is telling you, regardless of what has has been written, the records have been written before you, some of the most powerful tools you are going to have are your journal, your pen, and your word, your mind, your thought. So don't take away from your own power. What's going on with the lovers and the death card, my love? Let's talk. Divine speak the moon. Talk about it. Nine of pentacles. I'm hearing the words reevaluating. Again, there's this feeling of like, yo, I've come so far. I can't believe that I feel the way that I feel right now. I can't believe that this is what happened. I can't believe that I have to pivot. I heard the word annoyed, annoyance, disappointment, defeat. And spirit is saying at the time of the eclipse, take those feelings of frustration and Use them to power to fuel your direction moving forward because all those feelings are saying is that there's something more and greater for you. This is not just you 
there are other people and other things around you that are feeling the same way that are looking for what you are looking for. It's like what you seek is seeking you type of energy is what's coming through. Spirit, speak a little bit more clearly, please, if you don't mind. For the time of the November 19th partial lunar eclipse. Birds keep coming through, number one, big time. Big energy on birds, they're the messengers. They also can sense when something is off and they will attack it or fly away from it. If you have chickens, they will attack it. <laughs> the devil card. I just heard evil is afoot. Typically, the devil card is not something that is demonic. Um, Queen of Wands. This doesn't feel very constructive or this doesn't feel very positive. This feels like a feminine energy that doesn't have to be a female, doesn't have to be a woman. It feels like someone using their powers in order to entice the masses or you or multiple people. It's not just one person, it's like a group. If, you're, if, you, if this resonates, you're part of the group. They want to entice you to continue to perform is actually, there's this worry about performance. They want to entice you to perform because they're benefiting from it. You have to ask your higher self, your intuitive self, what is their intention? And you don't need to go looking for it. The devil card says, don't go looking for it. Trust your, trust your feeling. And when the feeling is off, be out. The Taurus eclipse is going to definitely bring that to light. Nova, come here. Yeah, Knight of Swords. You're going to get some information. You're going to get some emails, some word of mouth, some gossip, some information that you're, you're, it's going to confirm to you what you've already have been intuitively enlightened on. Don't even stay too long in that. Okay, what's some, I don't want to say good news, but what else? Solid, solid, solid. Um, some, you, some of you guys are starting, I just heard starting new ventures, starting new businesses, starting over. Um, Wheel of Fortune, or the part of Fortune is sitting in the sign of Aries. Wow. Some of you guys are starting, you guys are really starting, putting yourself out there to start a new venture. Temperance, you're working it out. You're working out the details. You're working out the specifics. Be patient with yourself as you're doing that. Some of you guys are breathing new life into old things, and it feels like a new venture. Wow, Two of Pentacles is back here again. We're bringing it right around full circle. Um, you're, you're trying to figure out what works for you, and that's not something that you can easily ask others what worked for them. It's about finding what works for you. It's a very special recipe, a very special chemistry, a very special method of process. Own your power, know your power, and realize that you are capable of doing this, and you should be the one to do it. Okay, the star card came out. This is about revisiting your hopes, your wishes, um, and speaking them to life so that they can be fulfilled. It's a prophecy that's been given to you, a vision that's been given to you. In any, er any area of your life, ask yourself, what is it? What is it that I see? What is it that I feel? Don't think about the obstacles. Think about the, the greater picture. This card really wants to jump out. Two of swords. Sorry, guys. My girl is acting wild and my chickens are out. So two of swords is here. And with the two of swords, the word that it is I'm hearing is incomplete incomplete there are aspects it almost is kind of giving me like vision boarding there are aspects of the picture that you see for yourself that like details that need to be focused on those small details are in your daily ritual your daily routine your daily practice that are going to serve and help you help to get like baby steps to help you get to this larger star energy. Come here. Don't give me haggies. Look at this. Oh, I'm not even surprised. 
the strength card and the star card just showed up. The strength and the star card. If there's a reading or if there's cards to summarize the entirety of this reading for the um, for the eclipse, it's definitely the strength and the star. I just realized that that is not cobweb who's out there cockadoodle doing. That is pumpkin. And the fact that I recognize my chicken's voices. The devil card just showed up again. One last time, spirits, talk to us about the devil. I just heard mirroring. So what, what is demonic and what is evil are things that are very similar. That's a message for someone. That is a very specific message. It seems like what is good, but it is not good. The reason why it seems like it's good, yeah, Knight of Swords, it's like this tiny fact, this tiny adjustment that shows you like something ain't right about this. It's close, but it's not it. Don't allow, this is why you need to sit. One of the last readings that I did before I kind of fell into radio silence because the internet, man, it, I'd like to really prioritize my peace and my happiness and sometimes showing up all the time is like not the answer to that. <laughs> but I want to get close to you guys. I don't know why. I just want to get closer to you. So before I fell off into my radio silence, there was one thing that I felt, and it was taking some time out. And actually now I'm saying it, it kind of makes sense. But taking some time out for yourself to be quiet and to rekindle not just one thing, but a few different things within your life where you're at right now. It's so necessary. You don't need to continue to show up. And if you do feel like you have to show up, that's a part of the performance. That's a part of the problem. Spirit doesn't want you to be doing that anymore. As I'm saying that, I'm also hearing it. Also, my hands are burning. Um, what, I can, what I can say right now is that some things that are positive and that are good, that are heaven sent, that are divinely sent, there's, you want to look into the details because there's a mirroring, there's a mirroring that is, is kind of malicious and kind of, there's, and there's a lot, I don't know if you guys have noticed this yet, but it's the times that we're in, there's a lot of evil energy afoot. And the way that it tricks you is by mirroring something that is good and making what is bad make it seem like it's good. Especially, this is why discernment is so, so important because good things, it's like people, like evil energy tries to replicate who, what, or circumstances that are actually doing the work, that are actually have good intention, that do have pure intention. But there's an, a detail that is off. Ten of Wands. This is the work that I'm talking about. There's a tiny detail that is off. The movie Coraline is coming through. Um, I haven't watched it in a very long time. And when I did watch it, I was pretty much distracted when I was watching it. You guys know I'm a bit of a workaholic. So if I was ever watching something or watching a movie, it was because I was focused on something else. Like emails or something back in the day. But it's like... Coraline, I guess, and I don't remember the details of it. I'll watch it again, but there was, it's like there was mother and then there was other mother and something about other mother. They, it's like you can tell something was off about her. You could tell something was demonic. You can tell it wasn't good because a little tweak, it seemed like it was good because it mirrored what was right. It mirrored what was beautiful. It mirrored a comfort. It remember, mirrored something safe. Spirit is saying moving forward, this has not anything to do with the eclipse, you guys. This is just energy as a whole. Moving forward, you still need to practice discernment and trusting your own feeling. Get used to trusting your own feeling, the world. Literally, this is spirit saying this is the world that, is that we live in right now. Get used to trusting your feeling. Get used to trusting your intuition versus putting your trust in someone else's feeling and their own intuition. 
This is such a powerful message and I always talk about, you have two of cups and eight of cups. There are things that you are going to come into alignment with and there's gonna be things that you need to walk away from. And it's going to be the, the feeling. It, and sometimes that feeling, my loves, and this is, a, this is bringing around full circle, sometimes that feeling is not always going to be happy and joy. Some of you guys are going to look for feelings of joy and happiness and that is literally going to be the demonic. That's gonna be the bad because it's something that always wants you to feel good, but sometimes you have to feel, you have to feel sad, you have to feel just uncomfortable because that's the path that you have to go. Some of you guys are not gonna get that message. It's gonna be beyond you. It's not that I don't care, it's just not my job to teach you these things. Yeah guys, sorry about that. So as I was saying, having good feelings is not always confirmation that you are on the right path. And that's, again, I know that we're talking about the Taurus lunar eclipse. I know that. I know that there are a lot of people out there that are going to give you short, sweet, to the point, factual um, messages as far as what the chart looks like or what other people are saying. And I, I can't be inauthentic. I just can't. I, I feel we are in a time in history that goes deeper than just the moment of the chart and there are so many messages that have been coming through lately for me to share to you guys about where we're headed and I don't know why the word performance keeps coming through. Spirit doesn't want us to perform. They don't want us to perform. Let's talk about it. Let's just talk about it. Let's talk about it. It's like showing up for things that it's more than just that you've outgrown. It's just not, it's not good. Yeah, it's the world. It's the state of the world. We can't keep, I'm about to just get really deep with this because this is where I'm being called to, to talk about. Well, we can't keep showing up in the same way that we always have. We can't stay in this superficial, quick, fast food type of society. It's, it's just getting so much deeper than that and it's so much there's so much on the line. There's so much transformation that's happening. And there's so much that work that we have to do that it can't be just quick in and out. I also want to talk to you guys about the world card. So this is a fixed sign card. This shows all the fixed signs showing up saying that this is faded. It's fixed. It's set into motion for a reason. You cannot run away from it. You cannot self-soothe. You, you have to face it. You have to face the demon. You have to pull the plug. You have to speak the truth. And these are things that it's it's like unavoidable. It's, it's absolutely unavoidable. These are aspects within your life. Three of Wands is here. I want to look at these other cards. Eight of Pentacles is here. We also have Eight of Wands and Two of Pentacles keep showing up. So we are just, we're really in this uh, this part of, of transition and what Spirit doesn't want is for you to believe these fallacies that make, that call you into a position of performance to keep showing up in the same way. They want you to, to fall deeper into alignment and authentic truth. And sometimes that is uncomfortable and sometimes that is disruptive and sometimes it is derailing but if you actually sat with yourself the hermit card that showed up earlier if you actually sat with yourself and sat with spirit you would have this this deeper sense of i know i'm uncomfortable right now but i know i'm on the right path and me being on the right path does not always mean happy happy joy joy there are going to be some things that you have to walk away from there's going to be some things that you have to abandon um, or aspects within yourself that you're going to have to walk away from and abandon because you've outgrown them. What is the future? Spirit says, do you really want to know that? <laughs> yes. What can you tell us about the future? I just heard you have nothing to fear. They wanted to say it slowly. You have nothing to fear avoidance. And avoidance, there's the word void, empty, subconscious. These are the words. Just let me channel.
disruption, temperance, ooh. Um, you have nothing to fear but fear itself. I heard um, the punishment of mankind. That's really deep. Avoidance. They keep saying avoidance, avoidance, and the void. Uh, you push, push, um, push. You're pu pushed into the empty, like push into the empty, push into the open, push into the abyss. It's like spirit, like humanity, like mankind is getting pushed into this empty hole, and it's feminine energy. Um, you can't fight your way out of, like, you can't fight, like, you can't fight, you can't fight. Surrender, big, big word, surrender. Submit. Um, feminine energy. It's not about, we've been so active doing, doing, doing. Now we're entering into feminine receptive. And with that, you have to have discernment. Judgment, so judgment card, but you're being called into a truth. Called into a truth. I hear the word formation. Everyone has a, a, a place. Everyone here has a place. It's not punishment. You're being rewarded, but it's not the reward that you think you want. It goes deeper than that. I heard the word obstacle. It's like an obstacle course. They're showing me strength, like strength card, spiritually strong. Grounded, centered, stabilized, foundation, rooted. Up, okay, uplifted. I heard the words perpetual disagreement. They're like laughing at that. <laughs> it's the cackling. It's the cackling that it is that I'm hearing right now that just, it's kind of making me laugh. Perpetual disappointment is just like, it's like this battleground. <laughs> it's like funny. I don't think it's funny, but they think it's funny. <laughs> it's like tickling me a little bit. Perpetual disagree. It was like you guys fight to fight. They're saying you guys fight to fight. Conflict. Unnecessary conflict. You're avoiding. You're avoiding. You're avoiding the truth. Don't allow them to derail you. Don't allow them to disrupt you. Where, okay, don't allow them to disrupt where you are going. Honor your truth. I heard the word legacy. Your, 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 I don't know what this word is. Your something will carry on. Like I said, shuffle. Okay. I just heard Walmart too. Eyes on Walmart. Something about Walmart. It's the breakdown of like business or the breaking breaking ground of business. Like some type of like like Walmart, Amazon's Page of Swords, Page of Wands, King of Pentacles, Queen of Pentacles is here. The Chariot, Eight of Swords. Do you want to really trust where you're headed? Um, and ask spirit to, to bless you in all of your needs at the time of the eclipse. Ask spirit to bless you. Ask the universe to bless you in all of your needs.
empty. It's gonna be empty. Five of Pentacles. It's like shortages, which I can sense. I've been feeling that for a long time. Big time sh shortages in food and resources. I mean, that's Taurus energy. Taurus and Scorpio. It's the things that make us feel safe. There's going to be a shortage. And you have so much earth, tangible things. Queen of Pentacles, King of Pentacles. Rebuilding. We're rebuilding. We're rebuilding. Uproot to rebuild. What's the last message that you can give to us before I sign off? Page of Cups. It's like, this is an offering. They want you to go to your altar. Do you have an altar? You need an altar. You need a space. Do you, don't, don't neglect that. Don't neglect, don't neglect your altar. It can be very simple. It's kind of reminding me of like, when I started my journey, I had a wood stool I went to. I got it from the thrift store. It was a wood stool and I put like a candle on it and I would write my intentions on the altar and then eventually it evolved into a vanity that I still have. It cost me a hundred dollars like, and I felt, and that was on sale, like marked down because there was a nick in the glass. And that's what I built Bahati Life from. But that's not the point. The point is, you want to be, this page of cups is, meet me. Your angel, the angels, the guides, they say, meet me. Meet me at the, at the altar, but they're calling it like the promised land. Like, meet me at, meet me at the space. Meet me at the space that's sacred. What's behind this? Yeah, ace of wands. Oh, ace of wands, ace of cups. There's a gift there. The emperor. Oh. <gasps> I love that. There's a gift there. There's a spirit, like guide, a guide. The divine, it's the divine. It's the divine manifested in, in, as a physical entity, as a guide. He's going to meet you there. He's strong, he's protective. I heard he's forceful, but forcing things away from you. Call on me, call on me, call on me. I also am seeing how um, what is there will be here. <laughs> what does that mean? That means that how this entity shows up, it will mirror in a positive way into your physical life, into your physical reality. So you're being protected, you're being supported, you're being uplifted. There's this word of uplifted. What's the last thing? Spirit says that's enough. Yeah, Ace of Wands again. Prepare to be amazed, is what I just heard. Prepare to be amazed. You won't always feel it at your altar, but you'll see the results in the world around you, in your world around you. You have nothing to fear. They're saying, you. they said you have nothing to fear but fear itself. When you're eating every day, you're being blessed. There's something about physical, tangible. Go back to the root. Because safety, your feelings of safety. So you could be eating a lot of carrots, a lot of root vegetables. We're entering into winter time anyways here. Um, so it's like going to the root, slow cooking things. That's going to be the blessing. It's going to be a blessing to your guides, to yourself, to your body, and also to those around you. That's where you're, that's how you're going to know you're on the right path. Don't worry about taking on the world. Don't worry about taking on this. Don't worry about take. Don't worry about that. Don't look at it. They're saying, don't look at what's happening around you. Look at what's happening within you. That's the blessing. I love you guys. You know where to find me. You know where I live. <laughs> you know where I work. I'm always in the apothecary. I live at BahadiLife.com. That's where the magic is. Um, Working my candles, keeping my, you know, keeping my eyes focused, keeping my heart filled, keeping my, you know, my energy clear, all of that. That's where I'm at. If you need candles, oils, um, ritual soaks, all of those things are there for you. And it's all at BahadiLife.com. Be very mindful and aware of spammers. Speaking of evil energy is trying to mirror. They show up with my pictures and with my words and try to recreate something, but their intention is not positive. Have discernment. 
have discernment. And also, please go to your altar. Um, go to your altar, even if you create it with sticks and just create like a, a square and a space within your home, just tie it with some string. That is a sacred space, that square. It's gonna be something solid. That's where your blessing is gonna come through. That's the real blessing. Anything else is a fallacy, believe me. I love you. You know where to find me. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. Of course, if you are called to and if you're passing, it's been an honor. It's been an honor to sit, to shuffle, and to connect with you now. Until then, I'll see you in my next video. Bye. You were created to live a life of magic, abundance, love, and blessing, all of which will be up to you to call into your life with perfect divine timing. Mahati Life Apothecary is the magical home of Jessica Alexandria, where you will find a wide variety of mystical items to help you to manifest your heart's truest desires, as well as tools to help you tap into your unlimited spiritual potential. Browse the online apothecary and find hand-fixed candles to magnetize your intentions towards you. You'll find thyme and star-soaked conjure oils charged to anoint your petitions, your body, and personal magical items. You'll also find the highest quality of herbs for creating your own potions and concoctions, and even reserve time and space with Jessica Alexandria herself, who will work with you to create something special and truly yours. Each item found within the apothecary are created with intention in alignment with the movement of the stars to make them even more powerful totems to bring into your own sacred space. Visit BahadiLife.com to browse the apothecary and don't forget to follow Jessica on Instagram at BahadiLife where she posts daily messages to uplift, inspire, empower, and to remind you of your magical potential along your magical journey. Blessings to each and every one of you. I'll see you there.